Hi guys, and in this video, I'm gonna bring you some essential maintenance tips. Now, on the face of it, this might sound like a slightly boring video, but let me explain to you, it's essential, because if you wanna keep your beloved saxophone in tip-top condition, we need to maintain it properly. And largely what I'm talking about here is cleaning out the saxophone afterwards. What do I mean by cleaning out the saxophone? Why do we need to do it? What I'm talking about is dragging some material through the saxophone to remove the saliva. And the reason being is that saliva can be a bit of an evil when it comes to saxophone pads. It can make, over time, it can make the pads rot and it will be expensive for you because inevitably you're gonna to need to take it to your repairer and they're gonna to need to replace pads. So in order to prevent that, or at least to slow down that process, we need to maintain our saxophones effectively every time we play. So we are talking about pull-throughs and pad savers. First of all, here we have a pull-through. This is a high quality pull-through because it's made by BG. They make good stuff. This is, in fact, this one that I first picked up is one for the neck of the saxophone. This is the A31 by BG. It's made from a lovely soft absorbent microfiber material and it's attached to a piece of weighted cord. And the idea is we simply take the neck off the instrument, drop the cord through. In fact, I'll demonstrate right now if you take my mouthpiece off. Simply drop the cord through, and pull it through. Beautiful, very satisfying. So that gets rid of all the moisture there. And by the same token, we have one for the body of the saxophone. And the idea of these ones, obviously there's much longer cord here because we're dealing with a long saxophone ball. We drop it in the bell first of all, arrange it here neatly so it doesn't twist up as we pull it through. Give that a bit of a jiggle, turn it round and through it comes. And you might do that two or three times after you've played, two or three times in a row, just to pick up all the moisture. Now, the thing I should say about this is it doesn't pick up all the moisture. Um, obviously, the saxophone is conical, and it's a lot more narrow up at the top here, so it's gonna pick up the moisture at the top end, which is very important because this is largely where all the condensation and saliva and moisture is. So it's gonna do a great job of picking up the moisture here, but not so much down here. So that leads me on to the pad savers. So down here I have a selection of pad savers for different parts of the saxophone. So this is the pad saver for the body. It's just basically a great big long furry stick and it sits down the entire length of the instrument. And this takes to, tends to pick up a little bit more moisture at the, um, the base end of the instrument. So it does a good job at the top and at the bottom. And likewise we have one for the neck has a bit of flexibility in it so that that will fit around the unique shape of the tenor neck and then one for the bell. Now I should just briefly touch on the um, pros and cons of pad savers um, and uh, well, versus the pull throughs. Pull throughs are great but as I mentioned earlier on they don't pick up all the moisture from the lower part of the instrument. So that moves us on to the pad savers. Pad savers are great, but there is a little drawback, which is that when you, the idea, the, the design of these is that it sits in your saxophone beautifully so. As you can see, there's a little end bump here. And when we slot this into our instrument, it perfectly sits there in the bore of the saxophone. This acts as an end bump, and you think, great, end of story. I'll just pack it away in my saxophone case, walk home from the gig or the practice session or whatever, forget about it and then of course pick up your saxophone the next day and you've still got this pad saver in your saxophone. Well there's a danger to that which is that of course you're holding all the moisture in the instrument which is defeating the purpose of cleaning it out in the first place. So my suggestion would be use a pad saver but once you've put it in and out of your saxophone two or three times if you can remove it. Um, so if you're at home practicing for example uh, don't just leave it in the case, close the case with all that sort of moisture field sitting inside the case and the saxophone and sitting on this and basically the moisture then touching on the pads. Um, what I would recommend that you do is you put this in two or three times, 
put your saxophone on a stand or put it in the case with the lid open and just naturally let, let the air travel through the instrument um, and it will just air naturally and you won't have nearly as much pad trouble by doing that. Of course if you're at a gig it's slightly more awkward because this nicely slots into your instrument and you're going to want to travel back with it in the instrument. That's fair enough but a couple hours later you get home from the gig, take it out, do the same thing, let your, your saxophone air naturally. So I suppose an ideal way to really look after your saxophone would be to do a combination of pad savers and pull-throughs if you really want to keep it in tip-top condition. There's one other little thing down here that I want to mention, also made by BG. This is a little pad dryer. And the idea of this, again, it's made of um, absorbent microfiber material, which can be washed. I should mention, just back to these again, washable, so they last a long time. The pad dryer. The idea is you can position it behind the pads, press the pad down, pull it out, and it absorbs all the moisture that's sitting there on the pad. So it's, it very directly gets to the problem. So if you've got some particularly troublesome pads, this is a great little addition. And obviously, tiny little thing, you can easily sit in your saxophone case, no issues there. Now on to my exciting news. You've probably all been wondering what this luminous green thing is here at the bottom of my saxophone. Well, this is a brilliant piece of news. I heard about these about a, a year ago or so, and I think they're just great. So we all suffer from sticking pads on our saxophones, right? Well, if you use one of these key leaves, you'll have that problem no more. I can almost guarantee it. The idea is we have two lumps of silicon here two little wedges attached to each other with a band. It's very satisfying as well. And they simply wedge underneath your E flat key and your C sharp key. And as many of us know, the C sharp key is connected to the G sharp key. So we all have trouble with sticky G sharps and C sharps, right? You stick this wedge underneath the C-sharp, which is connected to the G-sharp. The G-sharp simply opens up and it now sits permanently in an open position. So again, do the whole maintenance thing that I've just mentioned with the pad savers and all the rest of it, and then use this. And these troublesome pads will then be in a, an open position and you'll prevent pad rot um, on these particular pads but they also have the effect of opening out the whole of the sacks. Now every pad is sitting open, so it has so much of a better chance for just aerating naturally. Um, so if you were to do everything I mentioned there, use the key leaves, have it sitting on a saxophone stand or in a case which is open, you're gonna deliver a much better chance of maintaining your saxophone for a long time without needing to take it to a technician and certainly prevent the, the horrors of sticking pads so um, a lovely little product, this, of the key leaves. And they're not expensive as well. They just come in this tiny little uh, package here and um, yeah, very inexpensive and just an ideal maintenance uh, thing to tag on to the other bits and pieces down here. Great, well that's me done for the time being. Hopefully that gives you a nice overview. And uh, if you can put all of this uh, into place, um, you will maintain your saxophone and just have a much easier life. Thanks.